Alrighty guys, Chris here with Joe. Welcome to the good old gamer, and we might be a day or so late on this. Zen. We have actual Zen information and actual Zen benchmarks from AMD, and this is awesome. Uh, while Gamescom was going on, AMD had a press conference, and they pit a, was it, Broadwell E, a Broadwell E 6900K at 3 gigahertz against their 8-core, 16-thread, Summit Ridge uh, Zen CPU, also at 3 gigahertz, to prove the IPC gains. And even though it wasn't marginally, I mean, it was marginally better, it was still better than a Broadwell eCPU, which is Intel's super high-end enthusiast CPUs right now. Granted, these are lower clock speeds, and the 6900K runs faster than that, and technically would be considered faster. These are engineering samples. Zen has also been pushed back to 2017, probably for uh, further refinement. That would be my guess, you know, to make sure that they can get to higher clock speeds. Uh, AMD has announced that that is the case. They will not just run at 3 or 3.2 gigahertz. There will be a faster model, but obviously they're going to need a little bit more time to get there. But Joe, the IPC performance, it seems to be living up to expectations. What do you think? Well, I think exactly that. They said 40%, you know, improvement for your instructions per clock, and it looks like they are delivering exactly that. And that's what's amazing to me. You know, we're, we always get a lot of hype, uh, and AMD has had this problem in the past, and we've talked about how AMD seems to be delivering, especially what they're saying. And we're talking about the recent release of the RX 480 and the RX 470, and how they seem to be pretty much on the nose with what AMD has said they are. So the fact that we're seeing it again with Zen, I think is pretty amazing because we're in an industry and a time in, in the world really where the hype train, I mean, is gets off the charts with the, because of social media and everything like that. So it's kind of refreshing for them to be hitting the nose exactly on the nose, right at the, right the nail, right on the head for exactly how they said it would be. And I'm, I think that's awesome. More importantly though, why it's so awesome, like beyond that, is that it looks like it, we're going to get that parity we've been talking about um, when we talk about, especially in the video card market and now in the processor market, we're going to have viable competition for Intel. And this is pretty amazing because this is, this is what we need. The, the prices are out of control. You know, as consumers, we are getting built for our money over and over again because there is only one good you know, performer and that was Intel. Now it looks like Zen is going to be able to compete at a much higher level, and, and this is that, that's huge to me because I it's I've always used Intel. Um, actually, I haven't always. I did have a, an AMD Athlon chip like ten years ago now, um, but I haven't used anything but Intel in forever. And I'm looking at Zen going, yeah, eight cores, sixteen threads, and in reality, will probably be much cheaper than the sixty nine hundred when it actually releases. Uh, so I gotta say, like when I go for my next chip, I, I'm already. You know, I've got Zen on the brain. I, I can't imagine wanting to go back to Intel, especially for the amount of cores and threads. And like we've talked about in previous videos and like we're probably going to talk about again today is that the, the DirectX 12 and, you know, Vulkan are, are going to be able to utilize these, you know, higher core, higher thread count processors to a much greater degree. And so I, I think, as you said, in the, in the future, we're looking at eight cores probably going to be more of a standard. How could you go with anything but Zen? Probably... Uh, for the for the amount of money it's going to cost, and again, that speculation we just don't know. But in reality, we can extrapolate that it's going to be a much less expensive option than a 6900K or whatever Intel's going to put out. It won't and, be a thousand dollar CPU like Intel. No, it either. certainly won't. And and that's kind of my point. So I'm excited. I think overall, there's a lot of good stuff coming out, and uh, AMD is really, really making me feel good about the future lately. They're they're basically fixing all the things that they screwed up, and that's literally just putting them right back in the game. And uh, ultimately, it really just comes down to two things. How well these things can overclock and what the price is. Because if it doesn't overclock worth the crap, and let's say they launch at 3.5 gigahertz, 3.4, I think that'll probably be where, you know, stock speeds will be. On an 8-core, that's pretty good. But, uh, you know, if it only can overclock to like 3.8, Intel is still going to have a substantial performance lead overall. However, if it can get up to 4 or 4.2, it may still be a notch behind Intel. But then that leads to part 2, the price. And most people out there are pretty much of the same mind. It has to be about half the price. I personally think it's going to be a 399 CPU, 
because that puts it perfectly right in a spot where Intel is pretty much boned. It'll be just slightly more expensive than the four core, you know, i7s, and it will be slightly below the six core i7s, and it's right in a spot where Intel is just weak because you can either get two more cores for less money or you can get double the cores for a little bit more money even though the IPC will be lower than the Skylake or Cabby Lake at that time you're getting twice the cores which in reality once they are fully utilized will be twice as fast so there's there's almost no reason to buy any Intel processor at that price point so we, we really have to wait and see what they do there now if it is like an $800 processor I think that this is just you know not gonna work so I don't think they're gonna be quite that high but ultimately it comes down to those two factors if they hit both I think uh, AMD's right back in this and Intel is gonna have to revamp their entire lineup they're just gonna have to drastically reduce prices to compete and I know they don't want to do that but they're gonna have to well, I think realistically that their higher end model will still hit under $500. I mean, I can't imagine a scenario where they think they're going to be able to put out a high end product above that, you know, maybe like $1,000, like these stupid Broadwell E chips. I just don't think they're going to get away with that. AMD is going to need to compete very strongly with price in order to regain the market share. Um, but I also think that uh, as long as there is a product in the $400 range, you know, I think that's going to be where the bread and butter is. So I really, I expect them to try to get the best product out for that specific price point. And again, I think there is going to be multiple products. But overall, I think, uh, I think AMD is going to do it. We we have talked about it at length before. They haven't let me down just yet with you know the RX 480 and 470 and now Zen. So I'm cautiously optimistic, but uh, I think we're going to see that. I do. Honestly, my big thing is, is AMD's really got to get on this, though. With the RX 480, they, there's not enough of them. They are, they're constantly out of stock, and I think that's really hurting them. And with uh, Zen, I'm afraid the same thing's going to happen, that they're, just gonna, they're not going to be able to keep up with demand. And perhaps maybe that's why they're pushing it back, so they don't have this issue again. I don't know. But uh, they, they really need to get these things out as soon as they can. Because the longer they wait, the faster Intel is going to come out with their next product. Uh, same thing with Vega. By the time, if that comes out, Q1 of next year, the new uh, Voltus GPUs aren't going to be too far behind, maybe six months behind from uh, NVIDIA. So they really kind of need to keep up with their competitors as far as timing goes. Overall, I'm still really impressed with the, the numbers that they're putting out. The fact that in uh, Blender, which is basically like Cinebench, IPC-wise, it can keep up with a hey, Broadwell E. This is something that nobody really expected, clock for clock. So, looks good to me. We just got to keep on waiting until uh, and see how it ends up. I agree. Help me, AMD. You're my only hope. You're all of our pocketbooks only hope or wallet. That's true. Yeah, otherwise we're just going to keep uh, seeing price increases every five minutes. Alrighty, guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you really like what we're doing here and like to support us, please subscribe and share with friends. That really helps us out. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.